Tell, tell us a little bit about your relationship with Helen Wolf. Well, I heard stories when I first got to Chicago that Wolf was hostile to white people, so I was sort of uh, not real aggressive about trying to approach him. But then I started booking some shows for the university. I remember one night I booked Phil Upchurch and Donnie Hathaway, and less than a hundred people paid a dollar. But uh, so I called Wolf about a gig, and Wolf and Muddy were two people that were always in the Chicago White Pages under their real names till the days they died. You could call them McKinley Morganfield or Chester Burnett. Um, so I called Wolf and wanted to find out if he would do a dance at the university. And he said, well, you got to talk to my agent about that, but <clears throat> invited me over. And um, what I found out about him was that I think even more than music and people that work for him will tell you this too, he loved giving people advice and telling people how to live. He'd do it on the stage in between songs. He lectures to the band. And he saw me as a young man who could use uh, that kind of guidance. And uh, so <clears throat> we had some pretty amazing conversations. I, um, you know, just, uh, I mean, some of his malapropisms. One time we were driving to a gig and he was lecturing me about safe driving and a guy cut in front of us without signaling. And I said, see that guy there? He made me have an occlusion. And um, I think the first time he was driving me home, he was kind of bad mouth and muddy to me a little bit. And um, it's the trouble with muddy waters. He around too many loose women, you see. These women today, they be wearing their skirts so short, they showing two faces to the world. But um, like I say, so he's just paternal, and his wife had a nice job, and she was a great cook. So uh, I'd go over there, and one of his daughters, Barbara, who is still my good friend, she's two days older than I am, she'd sort of be receiving me when Wolf was, was getting ready. And I was always tickled because he had to listen to blues in the basement of his house. Um, his daughter would always play me Motown and stuff like that while I was waiting for him to finish getting dressed and stuff like that. But just, just really kind to me. Uh, and, you know, bless his heart. I appreciated every minute in his presence. It wasn't like I look back on it now and think, wow. I was thinking, wow, then when it was, was happening. One time we were sitting around his dinner table, and I was in town on a visit. I hadn't moved back permanently yet, and I was staying with Billy Boy Arnold, whose brother Jerome was Wolf's bassist for quite a while. And so Wolf <clears throat> said to me, you're, <clears throat> you're staying with Jerome's brother, huh? And I, and I said, yeah. Said, well, you could have stayed here. Well, if I'd have known that, I you know, would have been there in a minute. But the uh, so last time I seen Jerome out in California, he was up for slavery. And Wolf's wife and daughter, slavery? Was, yeah, slavery. He had two wives. But uh, Wolf was great.